Hello everyone, it is September 20th, and this is the Chris Chan uh, bi-weekly update, because I missed last week. Uh, you might notice that I am using Twitter dark mode, and that's because uh, it just came out, and people seem to prefer it. And it looks kind of nice, so I'm going to try it out for a little while. Uh, a lot of stuff has happened. I've actually been getting tweets and DMs on Twitter from people asking me if I'm seeing this crazy stuff that Chris has been doing in the last two weeks. Uh, and the answer is, no, I have not. I have absolutely no idea what has happened in the last two weeks, so we are going to find out together. Now, I know that Chris has started tweeting from his own Twitter account again, but I'm going to start on Magichan, because I think that that's the furthest back that we can go. So this is starting September 10th. Greetings, everyone. I am feeling well enough. Christine is channeling fresh energy and power into her body here from California here on the 1218 side of the curtain, fully. The body is having to rest and readjust to it, but we are progressing even further. On a side note, Christine has missed Lucas, Devil, and Eva since the last time she has heard from them. I feel her on that as well. The three of them are very kind Sonichus and Rose Chew. Also, today is Lucas's birthday, and I wish to wish him a most happy and safe day. May all your birthday wishes come true. Unicorn rainbow kitty thing. Soon enough, you three, Christine, and I shall get together once again. Until then, I pray you three are free of the influences of R4. Oh man, that's a new word. I learned so much lore researching uh, the Jacob Sockness guy. I don't know what an R4 is. Uh, and anyone who might be a demonic. Uh, okay, so this guy's a good question. Is Christine's spirit in California giving you energy in Virginia, or are you in Christine's body in California receiving energy? I'm confused. I'm confused too. Let's see. Well, let's see what he answered. Oh, it's not. Yes. <laughs> I agree. For everyone's reference, the van's exhaust and brakes are restored, and the bill reads as estimated almost $1,000. Read it and weep. <laughs> That's not what that means. <laughs> That's not what read it and weep means. So, immediate donations would be most appreciated, so Barbara can still make the mortgage payment for this month, and then a lip, lip, a link to the GoFundMe, and, uh, oh, here we go, a repair quicks god, goddess mobile, and we have an unfortunate picture of Jacob Sockness. Oh my god, he's cross-eyed! Oh man, I don't like making fun of people's physical appearances, but Jesus, he couldn't have picked a better picture for himself? He didn't even correct for the red eye. Wow. Okay, yeah, so Sockness made a... Wait, created August 10th. That was significantly before Chris's car broke. That doesn't make any sense. I am confused. There must be more to this story. But I guess uh, I guess Jacob Sockness made a GoFundMe for Chris's uh, van, and it failed because it only made $50. Everyone, I am drawing up Liquid Chris and his Sonichu form unpronounceable name <laughs> for his pair of cards. Uh, if you missed last week or whatever, uh, Chris is into this card game and he's making, you know, cards for it for all his Sonichu characters, kind of like he used to do with uh, Pokemon. I would like to share that Liquid Quiz's... Liquid Quiz... Liquid Chris's medallion is comprised of literal Jasper Stone, a large Sonichu-faced shape chunk of Jasper. So it, it looks like he's... um. He, he doesn't hate Liquid Chris as much as he used to. That's that's nice. He's I think because he's watching the Geno Samuel videos, he like kind of understands that Liquid Chris was like kind of benevolent and not like evil. Uh, my beloved Christine was approached and affected by Grizzly the Medic as well. I am more than happy to personally relay this link on her behalf. Uh, okay, so I think this is referring to the, um, the, the, the pedophile who went to the BronyCon thing, who was caught. Um, Chris was quote-unquote approached and affected by this person. Uh, previously, uh, in the last video I talked about, or I read from his Twitter, about how this person, like, came up to him and they interacted for five seconds. And that's what he means by approached and affected by. Chris was not actually a victim of this person. Uh, Chris is, um... He wants people to go to his Pokestop, which is his house, because he wants attention. Okay, so I'm not going to watch this 24-minute video, but apparently there's a dangerous brony on Twitter. 
and Chris links to the video and says, Quite right, it is inappropriate and most wrong to mislead others, especially in youthful jest. What? Why especially in youthful jest? You would think that, that would be the most innocent kind of misleading others. Though one may end up taking advantage of an adult for the laughs, they run the same risks in doing that with an actual predator who may strike back at you. And, at such a damage, what had happened to Christine in 2009, among which with Ugg Jule, Christine was mentally and emotionally damaged and scarred from that, while the child actor who played on her got what he deserved. Uh, so he's talking about uh, Blue Spike, that was a very infamous troll who pretended to be Chris's girlfriend, but was actually like a 14-year-old boy. And he was, he was ruthless to Chris. The moral is, fate and karma can be most kind, but they can also be quite a upon those who do maliciously upon others. So, children and teens, never go online and fake any relationships at all, no matter what. It won't likely end up well if you do. Uh, just for a moment, so, uh, see, you see this word right here? So, YouTube has this fun thing where if you say that, or other words like it, um, not only will your video get demonetized, which I don't really care about, uh, but it will get deranked, which means that they won't recommend it to other people on, like, the sidebar, and, like, after a video's over, you see, uh, other related videos and won't show up on the homepage and stuff like that. Uh, so not only will they do that if you say a curse word, but they will actually do that if you censor a curse word with a beeping sound, you know, like a, a censor sound that they would use on TV. So not only can you not say it, but you can't even bleep yourself. So I quite literally have to just skip over those words when I'm reading it if I want these videos to actually be watched by anyone because the algorithm skips over them. So that's that sucks. And that's it, it, it's good that I'm able to uh, put the things on screen so people can read them. Oh, ooh, this looks like it's going to get crazy here in a second. To everyone, I am pleased to announce that my body is fully visible and tangible here in this dimension, 1218, and Christine remains most safe and well. She has returned with Mewtwo from California, and I shall be switching us back to our original body shortly. Uh, keep in mind, Christine, or Chris, is in California in the other dimension. Chris didn't actually travel to California, he's still in Virginia. Uh, but before I do, I wanted to leave a few see you later thoughts. Over the past month, I have had many a pleasure to leave my initial wisdoms, thoughts, and art with the aid of Christine's body, hands, and muscle memory. This will be the big step for us all. I shall continue, tweet from this account from time to time, but I shall also be making my presence better known, personally, with all of you, and everyone else in the near future. And, of course, Christine will be able to tweet her thoughts on her account once again. I have seen the mixture of positive and negative feedback from amongst all of you. I remain as disappointed as ever with the hatred that continues to linger until the time when you all are brought in for your crimes or sacrificed for the greater good. <laughs> Previously, he'd said that during the dimensional merge, people who didn't have pure souls just wouldn't, like, wouldn't cross over, wouldn't make it to the other side. Now he's saying that if you're bad, you're going to get sacrificed. That is a big escalation from the last time he talked about this. <laughs> uh, that might be a Sockness influence. Uh, but I am moreover pleased with the majority of individuals and responses being most kind, sincere, and positive. I don't know where he's getting that from, because I'll, you know, I'll, I'll scroll down and I'll see uh, most of the reactions to his tweets, and they are not you know, mostly uh, kind, sincere, and positive. All of you hold a very good place in mine and Christine's graces and hearts. Thank you all. Please continue to be kind to everyone and to yourselves. Our bigger battles and fights will be upon us soon enough after the completion of the dimensional merge. But remember, we will be together with all of those heroes, superheroes, and deities, working side by side together and strong as the rebels against the dark forces in Star Wars. Though, more likely, much stronger than that, really. Until next time, I bid you all a safe and good day. Do enjoy and make the best of your days with everyone and yourselves. Should any of you see a, the certain shade of lavender, know that I am nearby, fully and tangibly. So if you see uh, purple out of the corner of your eye, you're not going crazy. It's just because Magic Chan's talking to you. That, you know, that's cool. Man, I'm in the middle of writing a video about... Um, you know, why I think Chris has these delusions where he sees uh, Magic Chan and stuff like that. And it's, 
a, you, you should be looking forward to it. Put it that way. I'm, I, I could go pretty deep. Uh, doing what is needed there. He, uh, he's saying he's going to appear fully intangibly doing what he's needed, if you see him. I look forward to personally, personal, per, per, personally being seen and shaking hands with all of you, one at a time. Good day to you all, and thank you again for your kindness. And yes, I will edit the power of this particular TSSSF card. What does that mean? Let's see what that means. Let's see, is Chris the only one using that? Oh, it's a My Little Pony thing. Okay, so after uh, 20 seconds on Google, this is Twilight Sparkle's secret ship fanfic, something like that? Twilight Sparkle's secret ship fic folder. I think that's, I think that's what it means. Uh, so this is a, a card game, and I don't even think it's a, like an official card game. So it's just something that the, uh, the fans of My Little Pony do. And Chris has decided to put his Sonic shoes in there because, of course, their world crosses over with Equestria and stuff. So they count as ponies. Good day, everyone. I am continuing to meet and interact with all of you face-to-face -face and in person. Really? Really? Is there actually... Is there one? I would like to hear one account from somebody who has met Magichan face-to-face -face besides Chris, MKR, and Jacob Sockness because I don't believe any of them. I still have many alives to make a difference for and with here in this dimension. Everyone who has seen me and talked with me knows who they are. Oh, of, yeah, of course. That's it's because it's only the people who either believe in his delusion or are making fun of him. And some of them are on the Kiwi Farms. Yeah, of course. I will be gracing Noel's presence as well within the next few days. Yeah, some of the guys on Kiwi Farms have uh, talked about how they just sort of give in to Chris's delusion sometimes because it's easier that way. Um, I know Noel said something to that effect in an interview, and, like, that's what, that's what, uh, what was it, Melvin, Marvin, something like that? That was a Kiwi Farms guy that was talking to Chris at one point. And I don't really have any comment on that, but, you know, it, obviously, it, it has the ramification of Chris believing in his delusions more because people are just saying, yeah, sure, whatever, Chris, I guess that makes sense. But I'm not going to say that they're actually doing anything wrong, because that might be, you know, the only way to deal with him. Meanwhile, many more portals are opening up in this world, and the magics and energies from C-197 are flowing into this dimension. Amongst the creators' authors of this world, as well as the fated and most appropriate and durable of the remainder, have been feeling their respective powers growing and further developing. Even varying telekinesis and telepathy within at least half of them, and various other abilities and magics with the remainder. Wait, what? Is he saying that about half of all creators and authors in the world have gotten telekinesis recently? Because I, I don't think that that's... I don't, I don't know how he could believe that. Like, obviously, like I'm, I'm not as actually asking for evidence. I just don't know why he would believe that. When it's so obvious, it's so easy to verify. Uh, I also put this forward to those who have received a quartz from Christine at BronyCon. Do keep your quartz close as they not only further develop and enhance your respective abilities, but also offers the greatest and soulful body protection and blessings that will be needed and most helpful to all of your choice creators. Okay. Keep in mind, keep your minds, hearts, and minds, oh, and minds eyes, I thought you just said minds twice, uh, and minds eyes wide open, remain observant and learning, do as you will, at your best, with your respective OCs and their allies, friends, and family. Mary Mary Sue and Gary Stu will need Maddie's, Methvans, and Kickets help very much in the coming days, to say the least. That's all for now. I will see each and every one of you face to face very soon and in the nearby days and moments. Thank you. And then he posts some more pony cards, because if Magic Chan was real, he would totally be making fake fan cards for a card game that is itself a fan-made card game. Okay, so that is the most recent Magic Chan post. So. So, Chris returned to his body on September 14th. That was six days ago from the time of this recording. He says, Hello, Earth-1218 and everyone in it. I have returned, and I have a lot to share, fortunately. I typed it out already and screencapped it, 
It is a long read, so grab yourself a cup of coffee and enjoy my experiences while in Magic Chan's body. Oh, there's a lot of screenshots. Okay, actually, like, actually, guys, just please bunker down because this is going to be, this is going to be a long one. Uh, I'm assuming this is in some sort of, you know, Discord thing that he's in. Hey, everyone, I am back. Wow, that was a real adventure. Okay, before we do more of this, I'm going to take a drink of water. This episode brought to you by, what am I drinking? Gatorade. Gatorade Zero, because it doesn't have sugar in it, and I'm on the keto diet. <clears throat> Going into a more powerful body in the neighboring dimension is quite the shocker type of an event. Anyway, Mewtwo and I had a great time in California. The first day, with Magic Chan's legs, I ran from Virginia to California. It was a lovely run. I almost tripped a few times, but the psychic senses gave me a heads up, so I was able to instinctively avoid the mishaps. The weather was clear and good that morning. Lovely views, even though a lot of them were blurred to me. Huh. I wonder what that means. Oh, because he was going fast. I thought he meant that, like, he had poor eyesight or something. An hour or two later, we made it to Utah. I found and visited my BFF, Anna McLaren. I literally... I, oh, wow. I initially had a tough time verbally communicating with her or getting her attention but I went to telepathic, and she was able to hear me. She looked like she was hearing a ghost. I clarified who I was and that I was standing right in front of her. I'm assuming he means that he's uh, communicating to our dimension, and he's talking to our dimension's Anna McLaren, and not like her OC in the other dimension. I put a hand on her forehead while she was sitting on the couch, sent a few mind-opening pulses, and she was able to see me. Startled, yes, but she soon calmed down. I told her about how Magichan and I switched bodies, and that I was on my way to Cali. She saw and takes with Mewtwo as well. It was a lovely hour of conversing. After leaving, we made our way to California. It took less than a half hour to look up Chris Kink's place. Of course it did. Of course he's going to see Chris Kink. That's uh, Jacob Softness. Uh, he wasn't home. The mixture of light and dark presence were obvious in there, but it was tolerable especially since my light power and soul were brightening up the place. We found Jake and made ourselves obvious to him. He did notice us, but was his ADD turned on as he remained focused on talking with his peeps and friends the late morning hour, that late morning hour. We did get Jake to notice us fully, or as fully as possible. I personally attest and confirm, despite his young Jake's soul, offline and in person, Jake is really civil and kind, as well as respectful of personal space, <laughs> of course. Uh, it's weird that he calls him Jake and not Jacob. I will admit, however, I still had my own horny impulses. <laughs> Whoo! Okay. I still had my own horny impulses, regardless of the body I was in. Soulfully, I can be quite, what's the word? I don't want to say nympho, because that's an exaggeration. Let's go with sensual. Anyway, he did have his body pillow attired to look like me. Yeah, it was weird to me, but he meant well. He did not need to enchant the thing either. I... I jumped into it and out of it just because he felt better able to hold me that way. I gotta tell you, he gives really comforting hugs. This is... This is actually disturbing. If Chris is, like, Chris is aware that this guy is, like, attracted to him, and even in Chris's own deranged fantasy, he's, like, getting physical with this guy. That means that on some level, Chris would act, like, I guarantee you, if these two people were to meet in person, Chris would actually do something physical with this guy. And that's, you know, that's not good. What else? I hugged him back. Yeah, see? I talked to him. He adored and appreciated my presence, attention, and kindness. It was quite the educative experience that I will keep in memory and soul to heart what I had witnessed of his magic craft. Whoosh! That venting sent out to take out the two individuals behind Blanca Weiss. Why are... What, did he just... <laughs> what? It's to totally off topic. As well as those behind Clyde Cash and Ryan Bash. 
way back when. I think he's having like PTSD from watching those Geno Samuel videos now. There must have been more than a hundred Metagross. What? <laughs> Making a, th a thick three-layer dome around his home temple. Mewtwo and I were about a hundred or so miles away from there for safety. So what, he destroyed the the trolls who did Blanco Weiss and Clyde Cash now that he's like in the other dimension? Okay. Oh yeah, all of that to ensure the safety of the innocent and non-related peoples. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we meditated around all the temples in California. We even visited Chinatown. Really good food there. And it remained quite rustic and lovely. Many portals cracked open all around us, and in Virginia at the same time, and our surrounding states on either side of the continent. The energy that poured in was amazing. It fueled not only myself, but an arcing rainbow over the USA to Magichan and back again. What he felt really lit up my body many times. It happened to me on my end with his body, too. Anyway, Mewtwo and I had to leave when Jacob stopped resisting Jacoba. Uh, Jacoba's like this evil deity thing that Jacob believes um, he has to deal with, and he also has convinced Chris that Jacoba is stopping the dimensional merge, and he's like this really bad guy. So they had to leave because Jacob was unable to continue resisting Jacoba. Um, ugh, it was Natasha Turner smoking cigarettes in front of me during Providence Middle School years all over again. Because those are comparable, an evil, you know, malicious deity and someone smoking cigarettes. We were able to keep ourselves distant when Jacoba was being channeled and talked before then to be safe. I know him. He really would enslave... Capital him usually means, like, God, like the theistic God. So that's weird that he cap that he did that. Uh, he really would enslave others in the guise of peace. The God Throne is really way too much for him. All he was really doing was keeping that throne warm for the next in line, but he has been too stubborn to leave it and was power hungry. We will take him out and restore everything as soon as we can, together. Yeah, see, Jacob has convinced Chris that he needs to take this guy out in order for his plans to come true. Next, I triggered the vibrations in Magichan's body to adjust the dimensional frequency. I had to work by soulful feeling in finding our 1218, and it took me hours of focus and concentration. But I did it! I got Magichan Sanichu's body fully visible here. After that, people did begin seeing me. Mew too suggested I teleport elsewhere, so we teleported to one of my many temples. The many temples. We meditated and rested for a while. Over the past week, we've been further channeling energy and power and sending them back and forth to and from with Magichan as well as fighting off a bunch of demons that came along after Jacoba's true self-counterpart soul tampered with the dimensional curtain. Ugh, that will be quite the union of that soul with this dimension's Jacoba. Not much power increase, but the motivation and arrogance will be worse. Tiring and crazy. Mewtwo and I teleported back to Virginia. If you can teleport, uh, why'd you have to run to California the first time, Chris? Mewtwo and I teleported back to Virginia after fighting off a few more of those... Mm. Magichan left his for now last thoughts and prayers, and as he put on the second earring, we hugged. Earring? Is this like, is, is this Dragon Ball Z rules? You gotta wear some, some merge earrings? We hugged, and we talked a bit how it tough... What? And we talked a bit how it tough it was for each of us. Okay. We felt the soul transfer happen, and it happened really quick, le less than a minute's time. Like a road trip, the trip to distant destination B feels like a long trip, and the return trip back to point A feels shorter and easier. From my perspective, going from a body that was still developing its powers in a restrictive reality, whereas my soul is the most omnipotent everywhere else, into a fully powered psychic electric Pokemon body, leading to control my emotions with the powers, even his brain worked a lot better than my own. It was unreal and new to me. Thankfully, Mewtwo mentored me, and I had a quick learning curve. It actually was as simple as my own psychic powers when I am projected outside of my body, or from my body and into the C-197 side of the curtain. Oh my god, why does he do this? Here we go. Still, it was like going from kindergarten to college. That's a lot of wisdom and power. I knew everything. 
I had access to his limitless knowledge and memories, including those of him when he went back in time and into other dimensions and everywhere. I saw myself on Kitasuna from his perspective before I was banished from there for the past crimes to be reincarnated through the chaotic rainbow and into my mother's womb and all of that. I watched both of my parents' lives play out from birth to present with Robert Chu's with Robert Chu's death from 1218 and reincarnation into C-197 within minutes to an hour or so. Yeah, keep in mind, uh, Chris copes with the death of his father by reincarnating him as a silent Chu. Uh, I watched and recalled my own life from birth to present as well. I saw the Big Bang. I foresaw billions of outcomes for this timeline. I saw the other pieces. I saw the other pieces and highlights of history in all of their details. It was intense. Oh, here's here's Chris's favorite words. Everyone take a shot. But I digress. Although this time he used it, you know, the correct way. I can only remember as much as possible out of all of it in my soul memory, which is now being transferred and backed up into my brain and my cloud safe backup in the cosmos. Yep, that's how it works. I will also attest from what I have foreseen Jake's visit here will be pleasant and eventful, and he shall leave Jacoba on the curb back in outside of California, not in Virginia at all. Okay, so if Jacob comes and visits Chris in Virginia, he promises that Jacoba won't come with him. That is really manipulative. He is truly a very kind gentleman and individual. I feel he should not have had to ever resort to what he had done in the past. But had he not done so, and reformed by mine and Magichan's personal interventions, and abilities, he would not be as better personally developed and confident as he is. Moral of that story? Treasure your experiences. Good and bad. They all shape you into the better and stronger individual that you are. I appreciate all of my past experiences, and now everything will play out and come full circle, fully and well, indeed. So here's, here's the thing, right? So, like, imagine in the future someone's reading Sonnet You. I mean, it's already kind of a problem. But imagine in the future someone's reading Sonnet You. And they're trying to understand, um, like, the lore behind everything that's going on. Because he, he just kind of jumps all over the place. They Like, part of Sonnet You canon are those screenshots of a Discord post that he just made. Those are canon in his Sonnet You comics. But I doubt that they're actually going to be explained in the Sonichu comics, which means that in the future, Sonichu comics will be incomprehensible if you only read the comics themselves. And I don't like that. That's why... That's why I think that stuff like this is... Really, by this, I mean, like, this video is important in understanding Chris. And understanding Sonichu and lore and stuff like that. Um... Oh, he's replying... Oh... I finally made good on my intended use of the animation cell from MLP G2 I purchased at BronyCon this year. I drew a background for it, and even chronicled a moment between Nightstar and Clover. Okay, wait, did he- okay, so it looks like he bought this animation cell, something that was actually used in the second series of My Little Pony. And... I guess he- he somehow... drew his own background? Like, did he ruin the animation cell? Or... usually these parts are like see-through or something, right? Did he just put it on top? I don't know how he made this. I honestly don't know how he did this. Huh. If any of you know, like, what process he would have done to do that, please leave a comment, because I am... I am I want to know whether or not he ruined an animation cell. Not that it matters, because it's My Little Pony G2. But still. I also drew up the 2009 model of Commodore's cell phone with a touchscreen. It was quite successful in sales that year in C197. The branding company had to continue on after Scarlet passed on in 1994 and before the power and responsibilities were bestowed upon me. Uh, keep in mind that uh, 2009 is two years after the iPhone came out, and there's absolutely no way that a phone like this would be successful, even if this tiny thing was a touchscreen. Commodore Block E phone does not have a race. Okay, I, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to understand whatever that means. I will also comment that for background accuracy in the art, I had to skim through the through my MLP G2 Complete Series DVDs to find the one moment where the animation cell was originally used. It took the while, but I found her. This Clover moment's context was while the main seven were talking about UFOs. Oh, today, today was the Area 51 raid. 
and that's pretty cool. Uh, we're talking about UFOs in the Up, Up, and Away episode. Patches and Bon Bon went up in a balloon and had to be rescued by a group of Pegasi and an alicorn. One of the Pegasi stated her name was Bright Glow. And I will also mention that I actually enjoy G2 better than all of G1, because the leading individuals of G1 were inconsistent, not counting Spike. G2 had a fair to good amount of hashtag continuity in it. The only, my only gripe with MLP G2 is the finale. All I did was talk about pollution and cleaning the environment, and the seven sing and wander down the street. No final developments in character, it's just a PSA. What a way to end a fair chronicling of the group. I still love Clover. Oh, okay, look, uh, White Knight Blueheart. This is, uh, this is actually Jacob Stockness. He has, like, three different Twitter accounts at this point. Uh, I have the whole series on my hard drive. I'll give you a copy when we meet. You need 132 gigabytes of open space for the full MLP series I have. He is promising Chris, uh, he's gonna give him videos if they meet. Like, that's, like, this is, like, you know, like, uh, can't, I gotta cut that out. Cool. Uh, yeah, uh, fun, fun alert. Uh, yeah, don't go to his Twitter account if you don't want to see some stuff. Um, but yeah, this is like trying to give candy to a little kid to get him to come in your van. It's like, ooh, look, Chris, I have some MLP stuff. I'll give it to you if we ever meet in person. Oh, here we go. For the record, the cell's not glued to the drawing, nor is it taped or attached firmly. I will have it framed as such soon enough. Also, for display purposes, I can choose how to display it. I choose to chronicle the moment between Nightstar and Clover that has actually happened with it, and I have no regrets about it. All Bart Simpson got was Scratchy's arm. How do you display that better? Add the full cat. Okay, so I guess he drew, like, the rest of the scene around it. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, basically what he's saying here, like, ignore the picture. Um, he's saying that he's noticed that people are compelled by him, especially the Christorians. Uh, any outsiders, and I being meta, whatever that means, end up wondering why. So he's wondering why people are interested in him. And then he tells a story. Uh, my earliest online content was a fan Pokemon website, Quick's Poke Site. Mostly, my more than two cents on Pokemon and the TCG. Eventually, I add my Sonichu book pages online. The drama happens with me. The locals take observation and later tell the stories and comment online. Before even the Yep, I'm on TV DVD on February 4th, 2007, the video content was light and spontaneous and most of the future uploaded videos I made end up featuring rants, shoutings, and that would frighten anyone. I recall that there was a mythos about me online myself. Christian, I, what, what is this? My, myself, Christian, I, I, okay. I was an OC in my own stories. Was I, the re was I real in this reality that is Dimension 1218? And then I was confirmed in late 2007 with that blurry photograph of me in a moment of great shock and stress. And everyone ended up making fan fictions about me, my family, my peoples, city, nation, and my Pokemon, including Sonichu and Rosechu. So he's talking about uh, in the early days, people didn't really believe that like the person who wrote Sonichu was like was real. They thought like it was a troll or it was just someone who was having fun. They didn't think that it was actually like this autistic guy. Uh, and then he's talking about how people would write their own comics like Asperchu and stuff. Uh, in a sense, while I already had my own chronicler. My DC superhero self counterpart in Metropolis, the quick psych light, everyone here in 1218 was all up in fanficking me, indirectly and directly attempting to alter my own life and decisions, as well as those around me who mainly originated here. Why is everyone compelled to follow me? The answer simply is that you all just do, in fated events, destiny, or whatever. Me? I have known all my life I was special for some reason. Counting being first-person perspective camera zero zero. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I've known all my life I was special for some reason. Counting being first-person perspective camera zero zero one. I'm awakening. I'm learning. I'm developing. I keep getting stronger, better, able, smarter, and powerful. Okay, this this might just be a crackpot interpretation of what Chris just said. So, excuse me if this is a tangent, but I digress. Um, does Chris, so Chris is saying that he knows he's special, and it's hard to tell because of the grammar, but he might be saying that he knows he's special because he sees the world in a pers in a first-person perspective. Does that mean that he believes that everybody else sees the world from a 
from a third person perspective or that they see the world from his perspective and that he is the only one who sees the world from a true first person perspective it's like does he does he actually does he believe that is that what he's saying here because that's kind of crazy that's completely insane that's a, that is that is a total lack of of empathy that is a lack of an understanding of how other people operate that's that that is some high levels of of delusions right there um is it any wonder as some of you put it cleverly that magic chan i and everyone else of c197 need to do a bit of retconning just something to ponder over thank you again phantom horm uh, so I guess he's saying that the reason that they have to retcon stuff in Sonic 2 canon is because he was, uh, the, the true story was interfered with by all the, the trolls and the fanfics in real life. Which, hey, that makes sense. If it, it's, it's internally logical, at the very least. I'm going to tell y'all a little story about the evolutions of the Sonic and Rose Chews evolved forms, respectively Metonic and Vamprosa. A regular Sonic can evolve into the Steel Electric Metonic, by being traded with a metal coat. A regular Rose Chew can evolve into the Dark Electric Vamprosa by having highest friendship levels and leveling up during the midnight hour. Midnight through 1am. Uh, this is references to like actual Pokemon stuff, like Onyx evolves into Steelix if you trade it with a metal coat, and uh, you can only get Umbreon if you have an Eevee with highest level friendship at uh, nighttime. He's just, he's just stealing that from Pokemon. Those are actual game mechanics. Uh, Metonics are meant to be the tough, durable soldiers in combat. They maintain their foot and leg speeds and reflexes. Their armor is actually super toughened fur and quills. All of their bodily fuzz gets the diamond tough treatment in evolution. The armored parts are the most unbreakable and impenetrable areas. That armor is not coming off anytime soon. They trade their spin dash ability for their sword and generate shields with the barrier attacks and electricity. Metonics are the best in defense offense, and speed one can ask for in combat. Yeah, so they're just broken. Vamprosas get a wing treatment, similar to flying squirrels, but bat style. So, so, so they have bat wings, Chris. They can actually survive during the day and night, and they are not prone to any of the weaknesses of a vampire. So, again, so they're broken, Chris. There are, there are a few Vamprosas who actually have been blessed in a church before. They generally do not feed on blood. They will only do so in self-defense? What? <laughs> in self-defense to weaken the worst of their enemies and foes. Okay. Cons so, that's, so, so they're just biting in offense. Like, <laughs> Consider them more like fruit bats in that sense. But they do defend better in the night and in the shadows, as they have really good nocturnal vision. They can even outwit a powerful psychic type, if the psychic in question does not possess miracle eye ability. Their defense stat is great in their wingspan, as the wings can grow larger to completely cover and protect the Vamprosa from incoming flames, ice, and other elements. When I first found slash created these evolutions, I had a liking of knights and vampires, and when you have them working together between on land and in sky, in brightest day and blackest of night, this is a power duo that works well together. Although it still adds a considerable difference that makes leaving them as Sonichu and Roastchu a better choice over evolving them. Also, in online search, I notice a Vamprosa form for Sylvana. She is unable to evolve, but she can still transform into this pseudo-evolved form as needed and maintain her natural and typical stats and skill sets. But with a flight ability and a darkness electric typing on top of her psychic typing, so she's three types in her Vamprosa form, this special one and only Savannah Rose Chew. Last note, Google Metonic and I get a bunch of Sonic and Metal Sonic shipping art. Just a fair warning, okay. And now for a couple new cards with this day-night duo. Whatever, who cares. Uh, so that's just a lot of Sonic Chew lore, I guess. If anyone's, like, actually keeping track of, like, everything Chris has ever said about Sonic Chew, then I'd say that's important, but in the grand scheme of things, that really does not matter. Okay, so someone wrote a comic about how Chris's Pony OC, like, did bad stuff. And Chris says, One does become humbled and aware when they're experiencing and feeling what others feel. When one realizes and are aware of their ways being harmful unto others and feels, they are not too far gone. It is valid and fair to send them to where they can do the most good. 
Also, to comment, that is one way how fate works. Uh, and then uh, a day later, he says, Good morning, everyone. A meaning behind this tweet has been brought to my attention. So he basically just figured out what the comic guy is actually saying. Mainly how this person wrote how tyrannical I came off as in my years past through my unicorn self counterpart. I agree. For a trolling act of distant observation, this method was quite extreme. But in this, as Ben had put it so bluntly, Nightstar had considered the contents of Phantom Horn's presently lingering intentions in his heart, while also noting that there is good in there, in particular, Unicorn Supremacy was being a dominant lingering intention. What? Okay, I know that Nightstar is Chris's pony OC, but what? <laughs> Alternatively, Nightstar could have brought PH, that's a, what did he just say, Phantom Horn? Could have brought Phantom Horn into her subspace, working within the one second of time in Equestria, and showed him his past actions and told him why he did in the present moment, why what he did in the present moment was wrong. In particular, much like taking a picture or recording of someone else, their permission and consent should be acquired beforehand. Nightstar was being followed around in being observed and documented, without her consent. Even though she already knew they were presently following her the whole time, she had hoped they would ask for her permission and actually talk with her for her direct perspective. She could have simply erased PH and SM's memories of the moment and let them go, but they would have likely repeated their action of trolling her in this faction, and not have learned anything. Out of all of the alternatives and options Nightstar had foreseen with PH's circumstances and intentions in general, as well as all likely future outcomes after those facts, she ended up finding that sending the two of them to New Milwaukee in efforts of calming the hate and trolling there, it would prove more of a galvanizing result that would most likely shape them to better understand the repercussions. Sigh. Again, I agree of how extreme the punishment appears, but Phantom Horm and Strawberry Milk are fated with protection to stay alive, and well, because they continue to be needed much later on for other future events back in Equestria and where else. The experience and views are intended are indeed violent, in a sense. This twelve more replies, Jesus Christ. This sentence is harsh, but it is not tyrannical. The means are justifiable. And it remains in fact that even if you bring in a police individual, or a group of police, they would not do a thing about this sort of individual trolling action. Not even the likes of the government or CIA or any of all that would either frowny face. So it still seems on all us individuals to defend ourselves and show why such trolling actions can be observed or felt as wrong, especially the types that can fall into bullying or hatred if left to continue down such paths. But I digress. Take a shot. Are things perfect even with premonition abilities? Nothing is perfect. All we can do is the best we are able to that leads to the best possible outcome for the individual wolves and everyone else's benefit. It's not easy on us, either. Regardless, this is what, at its also ugly, saw a Phantom Horns and Strawberry Milk set of events. I have verified and confirmed this to have happened between C-197's Equestria and Earth, therefore it remains fact and canon. Even being a deity myself, seeing all of these kinds of things having to play out for the future benefits, amongst my other responsibilities and duties, it is quite rough and tough on me as well. I feel and empathize. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Love over hate. Also, I will personally clarify and inform all of you. Nightstar is not at all cruel, insane, or psychopathic. That was a misconception that was made as It's Also Ugly took writing liberty to put those words in her speech balloons. Speech balloons. She is level-headed, calm, cool, sane, and so forth. Sincerely, very much like me. <laughs> But she is her own individual, with her situations that differ from my own. She literally works with Princess Twilight Sparkle in many a dialogue, intelligent conversation, and experiment and, div and dimension analyzing. Plus, she has Kuhn, who is also calm and cool in his own way, and he, keeps, and he helps keep Nightstar level, along with everyone else. She continues to have great mental focus and emotional control when using her powers and abilities. I, personally speaking from experience, attest and confirm that doing all of that is not an easy task. In fact, keeping a calm and clear mind, meditating, keeping focused and controlling emotions, with everything between this dimension, C-197, and all others related and existing. 
not to mention the alternate timelines and constant premonitions of various outcomes and determining the most likely out of them, not to mention coping with any random thing that pops in and interrupts your meditation and bums you out, or whatever have you. It is a bunch of headache magic is a bunch of headaches. Magichan, Mewtwo, and Silvana know all of that as well, and have been and continue to be most kind and supportive with me, as Princess Twilight, her friends, and Coon do for Nightstar. I reiterate, Nightstar is not cruel, psychopathic, or insane at all. She does what is needed, as fated, and appropriate. When the premonitioned moment arises, as much do I, and I have known that I was being trolled. Uh, and I have known that I was being trolled, but I play along, because a greater good is fated to happen. Sure, Chris, yeah, you totally knew that the idea guys were, calling, were trolling with you. Yeah, this is... This is... This is, like, incomprehensible ramblings. Okay, so that's actually uh, everything that has happened, and that's that's a lot. Like, between Chris being Magichan and, you know, in the other universe, uh, talking to Sockness and him believing that Jacoba is what's keeping the dimensional merge from happening, him actually really wanting to meet uh, Sockness in real life, him still making all these excuses for, like, how the dimensional merge can happen and creating his own internal logic and stuff. It's... It, it, it's it's fascinating, and it would be more fascinating if it wasn't so sad. Um, I did a video a while ago. It did not get a lot of views. Uh, but it's about this this other guy. Uh, frick, what's his name? Uh, there, there was this... Uh, there's this other guy that the internet was obsessed with for a while. His name was Terry Davis. Uh, he was an older man with schizophrenia, and he was actually a computer programmer for most of his life. And he also had this kind of uh, internal, this internal logic for the way that he viewed the world. It was it was obviously insane, but it was sort of sort of comprehensible, I guess. Um, and the more that Chris is more recently been sounding a lot like this guy, and this guy had full-blown schizophrenia, and he ended up homeless, and he ended up dying. Um, and it's it's obviously, you know, very sad and not good. And, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's... I think it's fairly obvious, if you zoom out and look at the bigger picture, to say that Chris is getting worse. And everyone's been saying for a very long time that Barb dying is going to be the tipping point because we don't know what's going to happen to him once that happens. Uh, like, we both don't... We, we don't know what's going to happen to him physically, like where he's going to live, and we also don't know what's going to happen to him mentally and emotionally. Um, but even if that doesn't happen for a long time, or even if that specifically doesn't have a huge effect on him, like, he could just do what he did with his father and just, you know, disassociate and pretend that everything's fine. Uh... Yeah, he he can't last. He th there's not much crazier for him to go is basically what I'm saying. He cannot get much crazier than this unless he gets to the point where he's literally babbling like a baby and just making sounds and is incapable in incapable of communication. Uh, it it can't really get much worse than what he's already doing. And I don't know what to do about that. And I don't really know what to think about that people already have a hard time talking to him because he just spouts all this nonsense about the dimensional merge. Uh, and one aspect of this kind of uh, mental illness is, an in, is it's an inability to uh, empathize with other people, meaning that you cannot put yourself in other people's shoes. You can't see the world through anyone's eyes but your own. Uh, that's why a lot of the time when he talks about uh, the dimensional merge or Sonichu or his own life, he talks as though everybody else in the world has the same amount of knowledge on topics that he does because he doesn't understand how other people could not know the stuff he does. Uh, it's also possible that he doesn't understand that other people could know things that he doesn't know, which might be why he thinks he's all-knowing. Um, I might be misremembering my Psychology 101 class wrong, but I think that that's actually something that uh, children go through. Like, uh, like three-year-olds... They don't understand that people can know things that they don't know, and they don't understand that everyone doesn't know everything that they know. Uh, and it seems like Chris is acting in a similar way. And as he gets worse and worse with his delusions, um, it could get more so that way. Um, 
I, I hope that I'll be back next week with an update. It might take two weeks again. I was actually very busy this past weekend. Um, I hope to get a video out. It's going to be more about Chris's delusions and basically how I, how I think he has come to believe that all this stuff is real. It's going to be about, uh, like disassociation, uh, and, uh, mental illness and things like that and, and, uh, and trauma and stuff. Um, I also have an absurds coming about Jacob Sockness. I have uh, a couple other videos in the works and, um, I also have my 10 K subscriber video coming, even though I am almost at 14,000 subscribers at this point. So I'm, I'm a little, little bit late on that. Uh, but I do swear that that is coming for everyone who cares and everyone who, uh, I, I, I did a Q and a, a couple months ago and I'm like, Hey guys, I hit 10 K ask me questions. I'll answer them. Uh, and I haven't answered them yet. So maybe when I get to your question in the video, you might have forgot you asked it. So that'll be that'll be fun for everyone. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Make sure to subscribe. Subscribble. Make sure to subscribe. Subscribble, please.